There is a spider literally directly behind where I've put this camera. I'm just gonna pretend it's not there <laughs> for the next like 20 minutes. If I keep looking over into that corner, that is why. She's just sat. Hi, hello, how is everyone? I'm excited for this video and I kind of hope that you guys are too because today I'm gonna be going through a load of TikTok books and seeing if I think that they're worth the hype or not. Essentially what I've done is I have gotten up a list that I have found on the internet and I'm gonna go through them and I'm gonna say whether I think that the books included in this list are worth the hype or whether I don't think so. If I haven't read them, I will let you know because I haven't looked at this list ahead of time. I wanted to do it as and when, react directly to what I'm seeing. So I have found a list. I think it is on Glamour website. I'm gonna put it up here so that you can see it as well. And this is a list of 19 books that are supposedly incredibly popular right now on TikTok. And I'm gonna work through them all and tell you if I think that they're worth the hype. The thing with book talk is because it's so short form, I feel like a lot of the time books can be overhyped because you only see, I don't know, 10 seconds worth of an explanation about a book and it's like, this is the best book ever, you need to read this right now sort of thing. Whereas something like booktube, you get a bit of a longer form format, maybe people give full, I don't know, 20 minute vlogs on books, which you get a bit more of a feel of what they're actually about. Which this is no hate towards booktok whatsoever. I do love TikTok. I don't have it anymore because I spent too much time on it, but I do really like TikTok and this is definitely not a battle of what's better. But I feel like that's generally why things end up being so hyped on TikTok. And because the content comes out so quickly, on on TikTok, things get hyped a lot quicker than they do on something like booktube. So I'm gonna work through all of these books on this list and I'm gonna see what I think about them all. Okay, the first book we have on this list is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. Now, if you have watched any of my other videos on this channel, I feel like you will know my feelings on Colleen Hoover. I don't like this book in the slightest. I read this, I wanna say, about two years ago and I gave it one star. I thought it was awful. <laughs> I really, really wanted to DNF it, but I thought, right, I'm gonna push myself through. I think I ended up listening to it on audio just so that I could get through. And I didn't like it in the slightest. I don't like her writing. I don't like the way she tells her stories. I don't like, I guess, the cringe level. That's mean. That's mean, but I find her books to be quite cringy. This book, I feel like, had topics that weren't dealt with very delicately, and I just didn't like it. If you love Colleen Hoover, props to you. I wish that I did, but it's not for me. It is not for me. So if there's any other Colleen Hoover books on this list, I think we know where I will stand. <laughs> I think I've only read two or three of her books because I think I realised pretty quickly that she is not for me. But I don't think this is worth the hype. I think this is quite possibly the most hyped book on BookTok and I don't get it. I personally do not get it. And I have a lot of friends that are like, oh, do you have any book recommendations? Do you like, what about Colleen Hoover? And I'm like, no, <laughs> please no. And that's not even me hating on things that are popular. I know it's quite common for people to go, oh, I hate that just because it's popular. It's not even that. I did give it a go. I just heavily disliked it. So there we go. Not so great start, but Let's move on to the next one. Okay, Slay, fine. The next one we have here is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I absolutely adore this book. This is a five star read. I have read it, I don't even know how many times, I think three times by now. I think this is phenomenal. I think this is a really, really great book and I think it is worth the hype. If you're unaware, this one follows Evelyn Hugo who is kind of like a movie star, Hollywood movie star. I think this is set in like the 50s, maybe 60s, and it follows her story and her seven husbands and everything that went on in her life kind of told retrospectively through a journalist who is, I guess, in discussion with her about her life and I think this is great. It is hard hitting, it is beautifully written. I love the subject matter, I think. Taylor Jenkins Reid just does such a good job of writing about like famous people and their stories. I just, I adore it. I think this is a great book. I would highly, highly recommend this. This sits in one of my favorite books of all time, so. There we go. Getting better. We're getting better. Okay, the next book I have is Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I also gave this book five stars. This is a sort of mythology, Greek mythology retelling of Achilles and Patrocles. I never know how to pronounce his name. Not a single idea goes over my head. Either way, it is a mythology retelling, which generally speaking is not my thing because I always feel like I'm a bit too dumb to comprehend them and they're always a bit too dense for me. But this one was so beautiful. I sat and I sobbed. I sobbed, 20 minutes at least. I think I finished this in the middle of the night and I just sat like blubbering because I couldn't cope with how sad and heartbreaking but how phenomenal it was. So I would again also highly recommend this book but beware that you will probably cry your eyes out because I most certainly did. It was worth it, but it was definitely emotional damage. <laughs> okay, interesting. 
The next book up is They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. Now I read this back in my like proper YA phase. When was this? This would have been, when did this even come out? I think I read it when it first came out because it was also very highly hyped on booktube at the time. I don't think TikTok was even a thing really when this came out, but I really liked this. I think it was a really, really cool concept. Obviously they both die at the end you know what's gonna happen at the end. And all throughout the book, I was thinking, nah, it's not actually gonna be, that's not actually gonna be the ending. They can't both die. Anyway, this book I think was really good for what it was. I don't think I would love it now, but I think Adam Silvera is definitely a talented author. I have read quite a few of his books and I did really like all of them at the time. But like I said, it is very much YA, so it is not really my thing anymore. But at the time I adored it. I very much adored it. So I can see why this is getting hyped on booktube and I can, agree in a lot of cases because yeah I can see this I can see why this is hyped I would recommend if YA is your thing if you're ready for a little bit of romance and a little bit of heartbreak go for it <laughs> okay Heartstopper by Alice Oseman is the next one on the list I have read all of the Heartstopper books I think there's only four out unless there's now a fifth one I have not read that I loved them at the time I was really obsessed at the time I think they are really cute I haven't seen the series I know there's a tv series out I haven't watched that it's not really interesting to me anymore but at the time of uh, reading the sort of graphic novels I adored them I think they're really cute I think they're really nice positive realistic stories about I guess young love queer stories just really cute really nice really easily digestible because they are in I guess graphic novel format you read them in like two seconds and I just adored it I think they're really cute I think they're really important stories and I would again highly recommend this one we started off not so strong and yet here we are. I feel like we're we're on an upward slope now. Okay, my year of rest and relaxation. I actually read this again this year. I think I put it in a video way back at the start of my channel, but I didn't mind this book. I think it was fine. I don't think it is the best thing to ever exist. I don't know how hyped it is on BookTok, but I think it is a pretty good book. I think I gave it three or four stars. It's definitely sad. Is that the right word? It's not It's not like heartbreaking or anything, but it's definitely like a low, a low book. But I really liked it. I think that it was definitely an interesting one because it's more of a literary fiction book. We're following a woman who essentially just wants to sleep for an entire year because she's got a lot of mental health issues going on. And she just sleeps for a whole year, takes other drugs and sleeps for a whole year in order to try and deal with that. And I think it was really interesting. I think it was an interesting concept. I think it spoke about all of the, I guess, issues it was trying to address really well. And I liked it. I did like it. I can see that. I can see that. Okay, right. The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. Now, <laughs> I don't think I've ever spoken about this because I don't think I own it anymore. No, I don't. I think I unhauled that. Maybe I put it in my unhaul video. I can't remember. Either way, I didn't love this. I read this again when it first came out, which was the first book in the series. It must have been like a good six years ago, if not more. I didn't love it. I think that it felt a bit flat for me. I think I was in my phase of, I think I just read A Court of Thorns and Roses and like nothing could compare. And I don't think it is great. I think I've read all three books, you know? Or maybe just the first two. I didn't love it. I don't think it's worth the hype. I think there are a million other phenomenal fantasy books that would blow this out of the water. And I think that it is, I guess, a good entry level YA fantasy. Did that sound rude? I hope that didn't sound rude, but I hope you know what I mean, in that it is like, I guess, quite an easy one to comprehend, quite a fast one. I feel like it's a good entry level book, similar to A Court of Thorns and Roses. I feel like A Court of Thorns and Roses is most definitely an entry level book into fantasy. So I can, I guess, see why it's hyped, but I think it is most certainly overhyped. I wouldn't agree with how much this is spoken about and how much this is loved. I think it's a bit much. I think it's a bit much. I think it is fine but it is definitely not the best book that I have ever read. <laughs> okay, slay, slay, big slay. The next book we have is Cawthorn's Roses by Miss Sarah J Maas. I have spoken about this book like five times already in this video alone, so I think we know my thoughts and feelings on this. Phenomenal. I think this is great. I think the first book is definitely not the best book of the entire series. It has its flaws. It's definitely not, I don't know, the best thing to ever exist. <laughs> they definitely get better as you get through this series, but my favorite book ever, is A Court of Mist and Fury, which is the second book in this series. And I think that Sarah J Maas just has such a talent for writing fantasy books that are just my perfect fantasy. Like there's just the right amount of world building. It's kind of not so high fantasy that it's overwhelming, but it's not, you know, really basic. The romances are great. I don't know. 
I just think that she is my sort of perfect fantasy writer and I think that this series is just great. Again, the first book itself, A Court of Thorns and Roses itself, is not the best book to ever exist. I can very much admit that, but I think that it gets so much better as you get through the series, so I think that the second book, again, best thing to ever exist. Of course. <laughs> but yeah, I would highly, highly recommend this series if you haven't read it. Like I said, gets better from the second book. We have a lot in that series now. She has a lot of series out, and I like all of them. Moving on, we have The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. Now, I have not read this book. I do own it and I want to read it. I was thinking of doing a part two of my reading popular TikTok book vlog thing. I did one last month and found some new favorites, to be honest. So I was considering putting this one in my next installment of that. So I guess we shall see. I think I will enjoy it, but I can't say anything concretely yet because I have not read it but it is very much on my radar and I do own it. So I have every intention of reading it. But that's the first book we've come across so far that I haven't read. I feel like I might have jinxed it now. And now we're gonna have a million books that I haven't read. But let's move to the next. Okay, Shatter Me, fine. Again, this is not only hyped on Booktop, but also on Booktube at the moment. The people that I tend to watch are mainly at the moment, Sarah, Des, Lowry, that sort of group. And a lot of them have been reading this recently and loving it now. <laughs> This is definitely a me problem because I did not like this book in the slightest. I have only read Shatter Me, I didn't read the rest of the series. I did buy the entire series and then I only read Shatter Me and then I couldn't bring myself to read the rest of it. Now, it's a quick book. It is most certainly a quick book. It is extremely easily digestible. I read it in one sitting, but I don't think it's that great. <laughs> Again, I say that it is a me issue because I do not like YA anymore. I have most certainly grown out of my YA phase. I'm, I'm, I don't find them interesting to me anymore. And I read this when I was already out of my YA phase. So I kind of knew that I wasn't gonna love it. So me problem, right? It is YA, at least the first one. It reads very much YA. It read very cringy to me. I feel like it was very like little kiddie book. And I just, I couldn't gel with it. I couldn't, and that is no hate to people that love it, because again, I am a Akatar stan, and a lot of people don't like Akatar and think that it is, I don't know, childish, rubbish, whatever. And I stand by it. So if you love Shatter Me, good for you, but I can't get behind it. I didn't, I just couldn't do it. I found it really, really cringe, and I didn't really like the storyline. I feel like it came out so long, at least the first book came out so long ago when we were still in the height of like Divergent, Hunger Games, do you know what I mean? And it very much follows that dystopian, vibe, which at the time I adored because I loved Divergent and I loved Hunger Games, but I have just grown out of it. So I think it's a me problem, but I don't love this series at all. Okay, the next one is The Virgin Suicides, which I have not read, but and I didn't realise quite how hyped this was on BookTok until, you know how some bookshops have like a little table where they have BookTok books or hyped books at the minute? And The Virgin Suicides was on all of them, and I was like, isn't this book from like the 70s or something? Me saying that, and I bet it's from like a completely different year. But either way, this is an old book, right? And I haven't read this, so I don't know. It says it's a modern classic. Should we look up when it came out? 1993. Okay, so I'm lying. <laughs> That's not that long ago. But yeah, I feel like I've heard of this book because I'd heard of, the, I've seen the movie and I'd heard of the movie and I feel like that's why I knew about it. And then I realized it was getting hyped on BookTok and I was bamboozled. I was very much bamboozled. I have not read this. If you have read it, let me know. I feel like it is not my thing. So I don't think I will be partaking in that. Uh, yeah, I'd heard of that one. Okay, next up we have A Little Life, which again is everywhere, absolutely everywhere. I have bought this book and I did read about 20 pages and I gave up. So I haven't read it, but I did try. This one I know is meant to be the most heartbreaking, like gut-wrenching book that makes you sob uncontrollably. And I wanted to read it just for that sake, in all honesty, because I don't really cry at books and I wanted to see the vibe and see what I thought. But yeah, I was bored. I was very much bored. I read, again, 20 pages and then called it a day. I don't think it's for me. And looking back on it, I don't really want a book that's gonna rip out my heart. So the books that I'm used to making me cry are things like romances or things like that. But this one is meant to be like, this guy just has the worst life ever and everything that happens to him is awful. And I don't wanna know about that. <laughs> I don't want to know. I'm sorry. It's not for me. Okay, On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous. I have read this book and I did not like it. Now, I have done a vlog in which I read this, which was quite a while ago, so I wouldn't recommend reading that because even though I've only been on booktube for like 
three months, I still find that video and those videos really cringe. <laughs> so don't watch them. But either way, I have read this. I read this a few months ago and I didn't like it. I think that the writing is gorgeous. Objectively is gorgeous. The, the author is clearly very talented, but it's another one where it went over my head. I can't do really flowery, really intricate writing because I need you to tell me what you mean. I can't infer. <laughs> I can't read and just infer as I go. I had enough of that at school. I'm not doing that anymore. And I was reading it and I was like, I don't even know what they're saying. I don't know what is happening. A scene is happening and I couldn't tell you a single thing about it because every word is so flowery and like dancing around what it actually means that I couldn't, I couldn't make sense of it. So if you love really flowery, gorgeous writing. This author is a poet originally, and I think you can tell because their writing is stunning. Maybe you would like it. Maybe you would like it if that's your thing. But if you're like me, where I can't read like flowery writing because I don't know what they're saying, then maybe don't read this. <laughs> Number 14, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I love this book. <laughs> I read this again when it first came out quite a few years ago and I really, really liked it. I think it is gorgeous. I have recently just done a video where I went through every fantasy that I have ever read and I spoke about this one in that video and I really liked it. I said in that video, it is another great one for almost, I guess, entry level fantasy. Not that it is basic by any way, shape or form and not that the writing isn't gorgeous, but I think that it is easy enough to understand the world that I think people that are new to fantasy would get along really well with it. And I think it is great. I loved it. I loved the writing. I think V.E. Schwab in general, we can all say is a very talented writer if you've read any of her books. And I think this was really gorgeous. And I think the plot is really interesting. We follow our main character who everyone she meets, no one remembers her. That's like her thing until she meets someone that does remember her and it follows their story and how she gets around, I guess, wanting to be remembered and living this life because she lives for like hundreds of years or something. I think it's gorgeous and I think if you are interested in fantasy but perhaps not really super high fantasy, this one could be great. I love this book. <gasps> Red, White and Royal Blue by Katie and Kristen. I adore this book. <laughs> See, I went into this video thinking I'm gonna have a load of really popular TikTok books that I hate and I'm just gonna have to talk for ages about books that I hate. And here we are. I have loved like majority of these books. I think this list is a good one. I read this book again when it came out. I've been kicking about on booktube for a long time in terms of being a viewer, not in terms of putting videos out, but I read this when it first came out and I adored it. I think it was great. I think it was one of the books that introduced me into the romance genre that wasn't YA romance. I think a lot of people assume that this is YA romance, but I would call it more new adult. It's definitely got steamy scenes in it. It's, they're not like super explicit steamy scenes, but I wouldn't say it's YA. And I think this was adorable. I think this was really adorable. I know that the, is it TV show or is it a movie that's coming out? I think it's a movie coming out relatively soon. I'm so excited for that. And I loved this book. I think it is well and truly worth the hype. Again, I think it is a good one for people that are perhaps new to romance and want maybe a slightly more adult one that isn't really intense and really smutty or anything like that. I think this is a great one to start at. I love this. The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Now, I have some thoughts. I very much have some thoughts. I read this a while ago and I didn't like it very much. I think that Matt Haig is definitely a talented writer. I know that people love his books. I just didn't like this one. I didn't really get its message. I know what it was aiming for, but I don't think it really hit the mark. It's about someone who essentially wants their life to be over and then ends up visiting this library kind of in like this, it's kind of like purgatory, right? It's like you're in between life and death and they essentially get shown all of the paths their life could have taken. And they see a load of different, I guess, outcomes of their life had they done diff things differently within their life. And I think that the plot is really interesting hence why I picked it up, but I just don't think it was executed very well. And I just didn't like how it dealt with certain things. And it wasn't, it just wasn't, it wasn't a fave for me. I think it is not worth the hype. I think there are plenty of other books that probably address very similar things, but do it better. <laughs> okay, If We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. Damn, this book is old. <laughs> it's not even that old. But this, I read this when I was like 
13 or something. Oh my god, I haven't seen this in a long time. Can you tell I'm not really on like book talk because I did not know that this one was as popular as it was. Oh my god, I remember this being popular on booktube 2014, something like that, but oh my god. Okay, I don't think this is worth the hype. <laughs> when I read it, I didn't love it all that much. I think the plot was intriguing, but I think it confused me. And that's why I didn't like it. So maybe that's not the best reason to dislike a book because maybe it was just me not comprehending things properly because I was like 12. But yeah, I don't think this is hugely worth the hype. I don't know whether if I would reread it now I would like it. I kind of doubt it because I believe it's definitely more of a YA age range. I'm just so interested that this is like hyped at the moment. I didn't know that. I think that's such a random book to like pop back up because it was out such a long time. I'm not gonna find out when it actually came out. 2014, yeah, I would have read this in 2014. I would have been 13 or 14 years old when that came out. That's crazy. <laughs> I didn't know that was so hyped. I didn't like it that much at the time. Do with that what you will, but it was almost 10 years ago now. I'm 22 now, almost 10 years ago now. Oh my God. Okay, next one is The Silent Patient by Alex Michalades. I did quite like this. I didn't know that this was quite as hyped as it was. I knew that it was popular, but I didn't know it was TikTok popular. Interesting. I think this book is fine. I think Alex Michalades is, what was his other one? The Maidens, The Maidens. I know that one was really popular. I didn't love that one that much. I think I preferred The Silent Patient. I only read that, I think last year, maybe a year before. Yeah, I think it's worth the hype. I don't think it's the best thriller thing to ever exist, but I do see why people like it. I definitely read it really quickly and I think that it is a good, I don't want to say basic because it's not basic, but it is like a good standard thriller. Does that make sense? Without sounding mean. I enjoyed it, I promise. I just, I'm trying to find a way to word it that doesn't sound like I'm being rude. It's not basic, but it's a good solid standard thriller. <gasps> okay, this is the last book on this list, number 19, People We Meet On Vacation. I have an interesting relationship with Emily Henry. I know that she is beloved and I can most certainly see why. I have done a reading vlog where I read a few of her books. I have now read every book that she has released and I am a very much middle of the road on her books. <laughs> People We Meet On Vacation, I liked the first half and then I think it went downhill. But I think People We Meet On Vacation is her least liked book that she's released. So I'm surprised to see it on this list because at least from like a booktube standpoint, most people say that it's their least favorite book of hers. So I'm surprised that it's on the most hyped. However, I think I gave it three stars. So I don't think it was a bad book. I've given all of her books three stars other than Happy Place, which I gave five stars. So do you see what I mean when I say I'm middle of the road? I don't really know where I stand. Happy Place is her most recent one. So maybe from now on, I will be a complete Emily Henry five star stan. Who knows, <laughs> who knows? But I think that it is a fine book, but I do think that her other books are better. I think it is her, I don't want to say worst because it's not a bad book, but it, out of all of her books, it is most certainly my least favourite of all of them. So is it worth the hype? Maybe not, but I don't think it's a bad book by any stretch of the imagination. I would just encourage you to look at some of her other books. I think Beach Read is her most beloved and then maybe Book Lovers Happy Place are kind of similar. Um, is that all that she's got? She's only got four romance that I know of. I know she's got a YA book, but that's all of her romance that I can think of. But I would encourage you to look at her other books if you're interested in Emily Henry. I don't think that is the best one to start off with. Now, I feel like we've not covered that many, so I wanna find another list here. I've just searched literally TikTok books to see, and I'm gonna do a little quick fire here of any that I've not covered. Okay, we have Verity by Colleen Hoover. Now, I spoke about Colleen Hoover earlier in that I don't like her books. Verity, however, I did not mind that book. That is the one Colleen Hoover book that I think was okay. I gave that one three stars. I think it was interesting. I think that it is a cool concept. I think I'm just held back by the fact that I haven't liked any of her other books. So I was like, I don't know, hesitant, hesitant to enjoy it that much, but I don't think it is that bad. I think that's probably her best book of the ones that I have read. But again, I am not a Colleen Hoover stan, so take that with a pinch of salt because it definitely is not a favorite book by any means <laughs> see look now we have on this list we have book lovers by emily henry again as i said i would recommend looking into that one instead of people meet on vacation if you haven't read any emily henry before because i think that one is 10 times better not that people we meet on vacation is bad but i think 
generally speaking, it's not her most beloved. Look, see, this is what I want. The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. I think that is a phenomenal book. I love all of her books. I know they are very much cookie cutter. I think they follow the same sort of people and the same plots in all of her books, but I like them. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I think that it, I think it works. I think it works. We also have It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. Phenomenal. I love Tessa Bailey. I love that series. It Happened One Summer and Hook, Line and Sinker. A little duet and I love them. I love them. I would highly recommend them. I think that they are rightfully hyped. We have the Twisted Love series. I love most of those books in that series. I think Twisted Games is my favourite. I think that's the second one. It is the bodyguard romance. I am a bit of a sucker for bodyguard romance and like a royalty romance. So I hold my hands up. That is my favourite one. I think that the Twisted Love series is definitely worth the hype. I think it has its moments. I think there are definitely some cringy things. For example, in Twisted Love, I believe our love interest starts singing to our main character and that gave me the ick. <laughs> But other than that, I think it is a really good series and I think it is a very good, I keep saying entry level and I don't want to sound like I'm saying it's bad, but I think it is a very good introduction into the more steamy adult romance genre. I think it's a good place to start if you're interested in getting into that. I really liked this series. Now we have Things We Heard From The Light. The first book in this series is called The Things We Never Got Over, which I have just done a video on. And I really didn't like that book. I have not read The Things We Heard From The Light, but I'm planning to read it this month. I don't know whether I'll read it before this comes out. If so, I will put my opinion here, but I hated that first book. I don't think that's worth the hype. It was cringe. It was too long. The love interest was, I think, really horrible and controlling. I didn't like it. I didn't like it, but I guess we shall see if I like things we hide from the light because it's the second one but it is following the brother of the love interest and he came across a lot better so i guess we shall see i am running out of charge but quick fire daisy jones and the six i think is phenomenal i love everything that taylor jenkins reed puts out i would recommend all of her books essentially i really really like her i think she again writes famous people's stories really well to the point that i believe that they're real like i genuinely thought that these people existed i thought daisy jones and the six was a real band I had to google it so <laughs> I think that is proof of how well she writes these books. I think I'm gonna call it a day there because I have no charge left and I feel like I have covered a hell of a lot of books but yeah I think that we've done a pretty comprehensive list here of book talk books and as to whether I think they are worth the hype or not if you would like to see another one of these videos then please let me know because I feel like there's a lot more we could talk about. <laughs> I feel like we've definitely not covered all of our bases on this video but that is my general consensus. I feel like I'm pretty 50-50. I think a lot of books that are hyped on book talk to me, I don't love, but there are also some that I adore. So we're 50-50 on this one, but I hope that that's given you some insight. Again, if you love any of the books that I have said I hate, I'm happy for you because I wish that I loved them. If I've spent my time reading them, I wish I'd loved them. Again, if there's any books that I've hated on here that you've loved, let me know. I'm always one for have your own opinions on everything. It doesn't matter. It's books. If you love it, that's great. If you hate it, that's also great. Whatever. I'm going to call it a day on this video. Again, if you'd like to see another one of these, then please let me know. If you would also like to see another video where I read some hyped TikTok books, let me know and let me know which ones you'd like to see because I'm all ears. I would love to know. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for watching and I will see you whenever I next see you. 